This video will end with our ascension of Ashina Castle, but our story begins many years before that. It begins before Wolf was assigned to be the Divine Prince's shinobi, before he was plucked from the battlefield by his father. We have to go back, even before Ishin Ashina founded this nation, all the way back to a people who loved the ancient land they lived upon. Before this land was a place where we, the Ashina people, lived. Where the waters flowed straight from the source. We were a people who loved our country dearly. But we were heretics. And we were weak. Naturally, we were overrun. Trampled into submission. For many long, excruciating years. We couldn't even pray at the water from the springs. <laughs> the way we were then. But then, the world fell into chaos. Could you... Tell me about the rebellion. We just took back what was stolen from us. Amidst the chaos that was Japan. The endless casualties. The flames of war. We found the perfect opportunity to take back our land. General Tamura is no more! Ishii, a sword saint of the Ashina, turned the tide in the rebellion. A devil with the sword, his technique was eagerly polished in the blood of his enemies, and his single-minded search for strength ended with him securing Ashina's independence once more. Pivotal in Ishin's coup were his seven spears, of whom very few remain in game, and of course his generals, every one of them accomplished in the now famous Ashina sword style. And in the aftermath of the rebellion, and now plucks a starving wolf from the battlefield. Well, would you look at that. Fascinating. Will you join me, starving wolf? Our hunger may beget a fine shinobi, making us a worthy right hand, someone utterly loyal to our foster father. And to this end, we are eventually assigned a prestigious role, Shinobi Tukuro, a young child who is an heir to a divine bloodline. As your father, my word is absolute. Your master's is a close second. It's possible that this scene, where we're tasked with the Divine Heir's protection, takes place in the Horata Estates. This is an abundant tract of land that was likely owned by Kuro's uncle, who would likely have taken him in after the death of his mother and father. An uncle we never meet, for everyone around the Divine Heir seems to die. I tried my best to be his guardian, but <laughs> look at me now. Three years before the start of the game, the Harata are raided by a swarm of bandits. They all attack with perfect timing when all of the young soldiers are out fighting, likely on behalf of the Ashina in their war. So only the older warriors remain here to protect the Divine Heir. Hear me! My name is Nogami Gensai! I stood with the Ashina when they claimed this land! The Harata are a cadet branch of the Ashina. They share a really long history with the clan. And here, three years before the events of the main game, that long history ends, and you were not by your prince's side. You? You're the young master Shinobi. What good are you? You were nowhere to be seen when things went south. Protecting Kuro is your second rule, but your first loyalty is to your father, so it follows that your father must have sent you away from Harata in order for the attack to succeed. After all, this bandit attack was his idea. Taking the Hirata estate was surprisingly easy. Owl's info was right on the money, you know. The man Juzo is talking to is Masanari, a lone shadow of the Interior Ministry, and you can think of the Interior Ministry as a sort of central government force in Japan. It's a force that appears to have come out on top of Japan's Sengoku-era conflict, and now they have the Ashina clan on their hit list. The bandits are simply a means to an end. They're a way for the Interior Ministry to strike a blow against the Ashina and mask the Interior Ministry's involvement. He's a villain. A down-and-out villain, Masanari. Well, he's useful right now. So endure him. For all his scheming, he's a nameless, rogue shinobi. His efforts won't amount to much. Father. Uh, 
It's you. I'm afraid I made a bit of a blunder. Perhaps the years have finally caught up with me. Ah. Wolf, protect your master with your life. Al fakes his death, now able to operate fully in the shadows, while you build a stronger connection with the Divine Heir by rescuing him from this nightmare. My lord. It's been a long time. This is Phantom Butterfly, a master of illusions who trained you in the shinobi arts at Al's request. Al's real name is Usui, and Lady Butterfly herself trained in Usui's forest, a place far to the north filled with mist and mystifications. She trained you since you were a cub, and with her dying breath, she finally acknowledges your growth. Lady Butterfly. Forgive me. You've gotten stronger, Wolf. Al's ultimate goal is immortality, the power of the dragon's heritage. It's a power held by Kuro that can be transferred to another. Kuro has lost his mother, he's lost his father, his uncle, his clan, and now he's lost his shinobi as well, who just so happens to be Al's loyal cub. You fought bravely on my behalf. I cannot throw away such loyalty. Loyal wolf, take my blood and live again. It's my theory that Al clears out the Harata estates and might have even killed Kudo's mother and father in order to increase Kudo's reliance on us and by extension, Al as well. An indeterminable amount of time passes, and you awaken in a well deep within Ashina lands, wounded and with little memory of recent events. A single Sakura petal falls from our person, representing a rebirth that we must have experienced here. This is the power of the dragon's heritage, a power that Al, Lady Butterfly, and now Lord Genichiro crave for their own ends. Imprisoning a mere child, I feel sorry for the boy. Agreed. But I'm sure Lord Genichiro has his reasons. Lord Genichiro now leads the Ashina clan in his grandfather's stead, for Ishin is old, ailing, but apparently he's not too keen to keep a child locked up. There's a secret passage beneath the moat bridge that will take us out of the castle. Lord Ishin told me about it once. So, with our sword, Kusabimaru, an heirloom of the Harata family, and Kuro, one of their last living members, by our side, we attempt to flee Ashina and abandon all allegiance to this country, but it was not to be. The Divine Heir. Last we stood together was your uncle's funeral. As mentioned earlier, Kuro's uncle was of the Harata, a man who took him in after the death of his parents, by mentioning their shared presence at the funeral, Genichiro is reminding Kuro of his blood ties to the Ashina and shaming him for the fealty to country and kin that he is shirking. To Genichiro, that fealty is everything, for Genichiro was actually born a peasant, taken in by the Ashina after his mother's death. There is an astounding amount of parent-child complexes in Sekiro, and it wouldn't surprise me if Genichiro thought of this country as a substitute for his own mother, in a way. He owes everything to this country, and he constantly says how he'll go to any ends to protect her. Once more, you're defeated through treachery, except this time you awaken in a dilapidated temple. A Buddha sculptor dragged you here from the field, and he nursed you back to health. He feigns this disinterest in you, but he betrays a sincere knowledge and empathy of your situation. He's being held prisoner in Ashina Castle. They will soon make use of his bloodline. Looking at you, I'm sure you appreciate the value it has. Here too is the woman with the red umbrella that bid us to rise from the well. My name is Emma. I am a doctor serving a certain master. What master? Forgive me, but for his safety, I cannot reveal his identity. The master she serves is Lord Ishin, 
who is, again, the now old man who once brought the Ashina to glory. And while it's true that Ishin is allied with his grandson Genichiro, he still directs his healer to assist you in retrieving the prince, making no effort to cut you down, even in moments where he clearly could. The truth is, Ishin cares about the Ashina insofar as his own skills can allow him to save it. He cares about a good fight above all else, and he will not abandon his own self, his own soul, in pursuit of power. For using such a power as the dragon's heritage comes at a great cost. Dragon rot, an epidemic that spreads to those that you've been in contact with, stagnating their life force so that your life force can thrive. And this is a story that has played out once before, long ago. There was a dragon rot epidemic in Ashina once before. Back then, a cure was not achieved. Every single person who caught it died. And in the time since your defeat to Genichiro, your divine heir has been wrestling with this burden of his power. We managed to drive them back once, but the Interior Ministry's army is far too powerful. And that is why you wish to use the power of my blood. It doesn't matter how much power you obtain. You'll keep on fighting until you're a monster, incapable of feeling pain or fear. I do not wish to corrupt the lives of men. Look at this mountain of bodies. Ashina cannot be defended by normal means. Not anymore. <laughs> I could never be as strong as you, Lord Kenichiro. I do not yet know what it is I should do. As you follow Kuro's remnants leading towards Ashina Castle, you realize just how beaten and bruised the Ashina are as the interior ministry steadily wears them down, as Ishin falls to his illness, and with Kuro refusing to grant the Ashina the power of his blood, something had to be done instead. A taro troop of physically enhanced but vacant brutes are forced into battle, not to mention a bull fitted with a blazing totem. Troops and generals patrol the landscape endlessly, and you cut them all down in Kuro's name. In no small way, you single-handedly make it very easy for the Ashina to be invaded. As it stands, the wave of interior ministry troops are breaking upon one My name is Kyobu Masataka Oniwa! As I breathe, you will not pass the castle gate! Gyobu the Demon, a retainer to Lord Genichiro. But he was not always allied with the Ashina, in fact, he was once an infamous bandit chief within these lands. But then, Ishin defeated him, and he was so impressed by his strength that he awarded him the spear of General Tamura, who you saw before, and convinced Gyobu to fight for the Ashina instead. With his death, you destroy the last real defense leading to Ashina Castle. That is, except for an old man within the adjacent watchtower. A man with a talent for killing rats and he's one who knows much about the Ashina Sword Arts. Care to hunt some rats with me? What? Rats have snuck into Ashina, scurrying about like they own the place. And they must be cut down. Every last one of them. War is on the horizon, a dreadful one at that. It will give birth to a demon. I'm certain of it. The dead will rise as mountains, and the hate will flow like an inferno. But it is all to get your prince back. And despite the endless entreaties of Genichiro, and the suffering of the Ashina at every turn, Kuro never once lost faith that you would return. He will risk his life to take me home. For he is my shinobi. My lord, I have come for you. This... will only take a moment. Let's see. For as long as you are alive, the dragon's blood can never be mine. 
Genichiro is the best kind of villain. He's the sort that commits evil in pursuit of a single-minded purpose. Not unlike you, really. You who spread dragon rot to keep your prince safe. You who murder hundreds of Ashina soldiers simply fighting for their land. Genichiro truly believes Ashina cannot be saved through normal means, and he risks everything by antagonizing you, clinging to this faint hope of being granted Kudo's power. Impressive, Shinobi of the Divine Heir. But you deserve better. Would you not answer to a different lord? Heresy. Heresy, you say? If it is for the sake of preserving Ashina. I will seize any manner of heretical strength. I will endure any burden. Behold the lightning of Tomoe. Lady Tomoe was Genichiro's mentor. She was a master of the sword, who descended to Ashina, bearing many heretical arts. And often, Genichiro could be spotted in the courtyard behind the castle, practicing his sword play, all the while glaring at the lightning roiling in the clouds. Tomoe is an immensely important character who I actually fully expect to have her own DLC, but we'll touch on her and what we know about her in the next video. Lord Kenichiro, is this the rejuvenating waters? Ashina, oh, this land is everything to me. For her sake, I will shed humanity itself. Resurrection. Yes. Indeed. So long. Note that both Ishin and Genichiro never say they fight for Ashina's people. No. They fight for Ashina's land. One small part of Ashina is exceedingly old, after all, and the ancient soil, rocks, and water are said to have attracted the attention of the gods. Add to this the fact that the dragon's heritage was set free from its homeland and drifted here to Japan, and we realize that there is certainly an ancient origin story here somewhere that we are missing. It's something that Genichiro and Ishin likely know, for they are unwilling to accept anything other than total ownership, both of the land and the water that runs through it. To think that Lord Genichiro would go as far as to drink the rejuvenating sediment. Rejuvenating sediment? That's what we call a particularly concentrated part of the rejuvenating waters. I'm sure you saw it for yourself. The rejuvenating waters. They flow from the divine realm all the way through Ashina's lands, but it seems like they weren't meant for this land. Drink them, and you may inherit an echo of Kuro's immortality, at the risk of your own humanity. The rejuvenating sediment grants great resilience in one's flesh. One becomes able to withstand blows that would be fatal to anyone else. My mentor Dogen devoted much research to its uses, but all of his works documents, medicines, everything, were burned and destroyed. I'm not sure who, but I heard one of the senior apprentices was able to salvage some of it, probably Dojun. And deep below Ashina Castle, in a long abandoned dungeon full of undying men, one of Emma's fellow disciples, Dojun, researches the waters. For the glory of Ashina. 
They let us in on many discoveries, but one is that red eyes commonly manifest in those who are unable to achieve their desires. And considering there are Harata soldiers guarding both ends of the cave, and that the results of these experiments fight for the Ashina, it's pretty clear that Genichiro was invested in this research. Furthermore, according to the Ministry Dowsing Powder, we learn that the Interior Ministry feared Ashina, her eyes bloodshot with the waters of rejuvenation. Lady Emma, tell me, what has caused the state of this man? The rejuvenating waters, that is what it is called. Are you telling me that this is Ashina's secret weapon? I am. Those who drink it cannot fully die. No, they become unable to die at all. The rejuvenating water, it also... It springs from the dragon's blood, does it not? Yes. Lady Emma, I do not believe the dragon's blood is sacred. Not at all. It's no surprise, then, that when we next meet with Kuro, he no longer wishes to abandon Ashina. Instead, he's grown. He's taken on the immense responsibility of his power, and now he aims to sever immortality, no matter the cost. In no small way, it was probably the desperation of Genichiro that led him to this conclusion, and you can tell that he even harbors some regrets about resurrecting you. I have come for you, my lord. Yes. You did well to come here. Let us go. We must leave, Ashina. Wolf, my blood. The blood of the dragon causes men to become undying. The same goes for you. Yes, my lord. I wish to save you. I'm sure that I would do the same thing given another chance. However, undying begets stagnation. The immortal oath, the rejuvenating waters, the dragon rot. They all corrupt men, to the point that they no longer live as men. I wish to sever the chains of stagnation bred by the dragon's heritage. Wolf, will you help me achieve this aim? The only way to absolve that guilt of resurrecting you is to use you to relinquish his power altogether. The quest for that goal is long, and it's complicated, but it's super rewarding to understand, and it's a story for the next video. Honestly, it's a story we're going to be telling for months, as Sekiro is definitely more complicated than many people are giving it credit for. And after that, we'll dive into the endings. What circumstances lead to those endings, and where can the story go after those endings? And finally, in every From Software game, there is lore that can only really be pieced together through context and the relationships between different parts of the story. This is the hidden lore. The stories that have yet to be told and probably will be told in the DLC to come. And then it will be time for Shadows Cry Twice, a deep dives into some of the best characters that From Software have ever written. So subscribe and consider checking out the Patreon if you're interested in becoming a deeper member of this community. There's so much to cover in the months to come, so let's figure it all out together. And I'll see you next time.